Hey everyone, Hoka One One Athlete and Coach Sage Canada here with another Training Talk Tuesday episode. Yes, I know it's late on Tuesday here in the U.S. Uh, maybe it's Wednesday where you are in the world, but I want to answer your top voted question from last week. This is episode five, I believe, rolling this out every Tuesday. Training Talk, top voted question from last week, and thank you to all of you that submitted uh, so many great questions and had comments, uh, really great content. So keep them coming uh, for next week. But this top voted question says, Hey Sage, how would you incorporate resistance training or other forms of leg strengthening workouts when running multiple days per week? It seems like doing squats on Wednesday could kill your times on Thursday or Friday. Um, could kill your times on Thursday or Friday runs. Well, wow. sorry, it's hard for me to read right now. Um, how do you balance these, or do you think resistance training is not necessary to get faster? So, kind of a couple different answers I could have to that. And first of all, I will say a disclaimer here. Obviously, I'm not a strength coach. Uh, weightlifting is not something that I'm very experienced in really at all. It's more something that we've I've done personally or have had athletes do or teammates do over the years uh, to try to help your running. So if distance running is really your number one focus, uh, you spend usually most of your time doing that. Now, the, the catch to that, the caveat is that if you keep getting injured or you have a form issue, resistance training and strength training could be very, very beneficial in helping you stay healthy. It helps you stay healthy and train more consistently. It also could help build up your speed or improve your running form in a way that makes you more efficient or what we call improving your running economy usually. Uh, It could also hurt your running economy. Like if you were doing a bunch of uh, curls and bench press all the time and you bulked up a lot in your upper body, It's not very super functional muscle for a distance runner. That being said, if you did some stuff with core work, specific leg strength work, and it improved your your push off or your knee drive or some aspect that kept you healthy, that could really boost your running performance and efficiency. So uh, the way we've always looked at running is that I kind of do the bare minimum, so to speak, uh, to, to get the gains that we want. And you don't need a whole lot of of weightlifting or very many intense sessions as a distance runner uh, to maximize your performance, in my opinion. Now, there is a lot of individual variation here, and we'll get into these details here in a bit, Uh, not only with the injury resistance, but also just how people respond to uh, a stress like lifting weights, how heavy the weights might be, and what types of lifts you might be doing depending on your body or some sort of muscle imbalance or something like that. So... It is tricky, but the general rule of thumb, and this is probably the number one answer component to this question, the number one rule of thumb, and you know, Coach Sandy does this with a lot of her athletes at higher running, our coaching business as well, is that you usually try to coordinate your lifting days, especially a leg lifting type of day, with with your hard workout days. So, and you run the hard workout first. So if you have like a speed session day, you know, track workout, repeat 800 meters, or even maybe a tempo run or something like that. It's a harder stress day. Right after that, you go to the gym and you do your squats or deadlifts or something like that that's gonna stress you. Then you're super sore later that night. And it's it's kind of making your, your hard day hard. And then your next day, the recovery day, maybe you take off or you cross train or you run really, really easy. You keep your easy days really, really easy. And it's just expected that, okay, you're doing these hard workouts. It's gonna make your legs sore anyway. You did some leg work at the gym. It's going to really make you sore anyway. Well, the next couple of days is all about recovery, and it's not about pushing the pace or pushing that those leg muscle fibers. Because yeah, they will be on edge and they will be sore. And it's better to just mix it all into one day, and then take some recovery days than to try to spread it out. Where if you did a a leg press day or you know a really hard leg session, you wouldn't want to do that the day before speed workout because it's going to crush your speed workout. Like. Uh, what they said in the comment there. So that's the first strategy. And, you know, it does depend on how much you're lifting. And what we see is a lot of people, if they get into a hole of overtraining, so to speak, you're pushing yourself too hard, your legs are going to be protesting at you already. They might get really tired muscle fibers. It could lead to sloppy form in the gym and a lack of explosive strength, so to speak, in the gym. So you know, we see a lot of people when they just get into weightlifting, if they're using their legs or core, heavy lifting, uh, you could get really, really sore, right? Your body's not used to it. Also see people 
trying to lift too much weight too soon, right? Uh, you know, I first went to the gym, I was gonna do some squats. I can't squat very much at all. My legs are pretty weak when it comes to lifting big weights. I had to like start off with just the bar to get my form down. So it means you might be trying to rush in with two heavy weights too soon. That throws off your form. That's really a big injury risk. And if you're building bad uh, muscle patterns, so to speak, brain muscle connection there, coordination patterns with bad form, you could throw out your back, but you could also be doing yourself kind of a disservice in the gym, especially with heavy weights. You don't want to be messing around with too heavy of a weight. So you do have to be careful. And, you know, some soreness and fatigue is to be expected. And that is part of like a progressive training plan. We do want people to kind of train through fatigue, so to speak, right? You're not running on fresh legs. You do workouts on tired legs. You head into your weekend long run kind of feeling a little tired from, from pushing that weekly mileage, maybe that daily mileage average or that daily kilometer average you've been putting up. But uh, you don't want to be so tired that your form starts to slip. And you don't want to be lifting weight so much uh, that your form, your running form gets sloppy or that you might get a muscle strain or imbalance because your muscle's so sore, you start trying to overcompensate with a different type of muscle group, right? Uh, so it's, it's a tricky balance and there's no super simple uh, complete answer to that. But combining some of your, your lifting days with your hard running days is really the best way we do it. We usually try to do it pretty fast. Like I'd run, you know, some hard, I was training for the Boston Marathon several years ago. I'd run some pretty hard speed workouts and basically go straight to the gym, have maybe a little recovery bar, recovery shake and snack in between. But then I get home, I'd be super hungry and I need a really big meal and rest up and just expect those next couple of days to be extra, extra sore for kind of doubling up that day. But it's much better to do that in our opinion than to try to fit in the weightlifting the day before or the day after, uh, it's better to just throw it all into that one day. And, you know, if you're weight going to the gym two to three times a week, that's probably quite a bit uh, for a distance runner. Now, again, if you love the feeling of going to the gym more than that, if you love the feeling of lifting a lot of heavy weights, more power to you. It's great for all around fitness. It's great for naturally boosting your testosterone. It's great for looking good naked. Uh, it's great for when you're, you know, those beach days. Uh, and, you know, if, if you have other goals, you know, upping your metabolism in different ways, uh, the high intensity strength training is definitely a good way to go. And if you can make it functional with your distance running, especially working on that, that core area, that core strength, the stomach, lower back, hips, glutes, things like that, uh, that can really help out a lot as well as if you have specific injuries or muscle imbalances that need to be targeted and addressed through some sort of strength or resistance training a lot could even be done at home uh, without super heavy weights, just using body weight to start and getting the form down. It's really probably the most important. But, you know, most distance runners, you know, even a two or three times a week of doing some pretty short sessions, uh, gym sessions, is going to have a lot of uh, bang for your buck, so to speak, and give you a lot of benefits uh, without too much extra stress, hopefully. So, uh, again, if you're training for a big downhill race, you might think differently about how to stress your quads than if you were training for, you know, flat races or shorter track races or something like that. But then speed becomes more of a, a role as well. Thank you so much for subscribing on here. Thank you to the Patreon supporters for really making this channel possible. Shout out to title sponsor Hoka One One, keeping the dream alive. Like to hear from you guys. Comment below and vote for next week's Training Talk Tuesday topic. Thank you again. Hope you're doing well. Stay tuned for more via 2 Max Productions.